Hey guys, it's Chris, and what do we got going on today? Well, as you probably saw in a previous video, there's Big Hoss. We were working on that, getting that sorted. When another 4,000 pops in the door, what's wrong with it? It don't work. I don't know what's wrong with it yet. Um, battery looks really good. No damage. U177. Little bit of... Eh? Uh, original caps, audio circuits all jacked up and crusty, so we're going to have to cut those bad boys off. Replace everything here on the power circuit. The decoupling caps are leaky. And along with C191, down to your keyboard control, right next to the Ramsey. This is an NTSC unit. This is a Rev B. It's dusty. Uh, circa 1992. Don't know anything about it, except it needs to be fixed. I went on eBay, and I need CPUs. So I saw the uh, A3400, A3200, not the computer, the A3630 is their nicknamed. They're the little 30, uh, yeah, 68030s at 25 megahertz. And uh, they came on the cost reduction models. So they were buy it now. Well, this it was one for buy it now. And I didn't look at it and don't have any caps on it. Boop. But the seller was cool, reached out and said, hey, your name sounds familiar. I said, I don't know, I run a YouTube channel where I fix old Amigas. He's like, hey, I'm a patron. I'm like, wow, thank you. So I bought it anyway. No no problem. I said, I'll, I'll fix it. He sent me both of them. The one that has caps and the one that all the traces are busted on the negatives. Or some of them, maybe, I can't really see, maybe they're just dark. But nope, that one's gone. Stuff like that. I don't even know if you can see it. Tip of my crusty finger. So there's a cap there. There's a cap there. There's another cap here and a cap down here. That don't have any. But supposedly they work. But this one works, he said. So that's going to be a tester for this. It's perfect for doing bench boards because I don't have to take my 4,000 apart or 3,000 or that tower or your mom. Uh. Stuff like that. Ebay's going off like mad. I'm out of PayPal credit because kind of went too hard on stuff. I'm going to put my phone on mute because that thing goes off like a daggone pager from the 90s and you're a drug dealer. We'll test out these in a little bit. I also noticed one thing. This board has no chip RAM, no RAM, and no ROMs. So I have to find some RAM that would work in here. If the sockets are even good. If the board even works. If lots of ifs. Um, still has the diode across the clock circuit, which is a good thing. Everything else, it looks great. Audio, eh, kind of iffy on cap-wise, but, oh, wait a minute. Never mind, I spoke too soon. Underneath this ROM socket right here, U176, you might be able to catch a glimpse of some stuff. Somebody went in there this way and, I don't know, or went underneath and... Doug from he I don't know. Who knows? Somehow the ROM socket got messed up. So I'm gonna have to replace those two. Maybe I'll pull them out first. Yep, I'm gonna desolder the ROM socket first. Just the one for now because the other one looks okay. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Doesn't last long. Is if you are to use hot air, you can actually delaminate the epoxy from the layers. So a fiberglass circuit board has these circuit layers glued to it, and that's your traces and everything. They hold up very well. That epoxy is some strong crap. But over the years, it can lose its adhesion, and if you heat it up and get a wave forming, that wave can form a bubble underneath and separate a whole boatload of stuff. All right, so our goop is removed. What do we got for damage here? Ew. Crustiness abounds. So, U891, it's C192 here. It's the capacitor. I'm trying to hold this in my hand. The capacitor near your battery and also the crusty part of 892. You can see the greening of the legs on the back pins here. And I'm going to need to clean that up. Yeah, guys. Cap job, please. Now, the op amp uh, is. Get my poker. The op amp is this LF347 right here. 
that is like what makes your sound come out and do science and fire out these guys your right and left audio this is crusty through the magic of editing the McDonald's chicken nuggets and the power of Grayskull and the op amp now looks fresh as it left the shower the audio section is clean and degoopified I do still have two fiberglass pan a couple of the ferrite beads a couple of these ceramic capacitors here and uh, there's a couple diodes in here I want to make sure are good so I'm going to continue the degoopification of this board. We'll come back when I get it all degoopified. About an hour, I got the socket out, jacked up. Didn't look too bad. There was a couple pins that had some green crap on them. I don't know why. Please do not use screwdrivers to remove your ROM chips. Unless you really know what you're doing. Because what happens is you scratch all this stuff and you bust all these lines look at those chunkies you're thinking well Chris that does not look bad at all and it doesn't er uh, right here busted right there busted right there busted now these can be repaired with drag solder but whoo what is this we got some more bloop these I think are okay I don't know how the hell you get in here and that's how you get ROM F C192 and U891 have uh, revived themselves you can see they're looking good their counterparts of um, three chips of death these are the three fingers of death they are good that is 177 U-976 and U-975. So I went to the dollar store to restock up on some supplies. Paper towels, Q-tips, squirt bottles for alcohol. More alcohol. I go through it like mad. Brillo pads. For what? For the solder squishy thing. Or scotch, copper coated scotch bright things. The same crap that you clean your solder tip out with. And new toothbrushes. Not for me. To scrub boards with. 4.43 p.m. Found a little bit of scuzz on the bottom of the battery. Uh, just just nothing. Continuity tech's okay. De-scuzzed it. Put some green fingernail polish over it. Fixed the trace with a drag solder. Only one was broke. The others were clean. Okay, so sockets in here. Got my cap kit from Retro Rewind. Why? Because they give you good caps. Panasonic's, Nichicons. So if you're going to get a cap kit, order it from these guys. Got a couple other cap kits too. This is an Amiga kit cap kit. But they do their own kind of mapping thing. And they do give you a capacitor map, which is cool. Um, but I use an online just version that lists who is what. And Retro Rewind's cap kit is pretty straightforward. It gives you all the caps in the bag. I'm reporting an error with the Retro Rewind cap kit. Sorry. Frank, but I gotta let you know. So your C460C is a uh, 10UF 35 volt, and here is your replacement, which is a 1050, but it's supposed to be a 3.3 millimeter cap in there, and this is a five, and it don't fit. No fit. No fit. So back and bolt. So it should be that size. Big difference. Now it fits next to the chip. Just reporting a boo-boo. So, small cap there, buddy. And just like that, it's 5.37 p.m. And I have the cap job done. We have a new socket in, so you'll see my traditional red marks wherever I put a cap. It's kind of like my thing. Okay, so I'm back. We got it sort of set up. I haven't put the CPU in yet. I got the ROMs. I had them labeled wrong. Go figure. This is the little ECO 30 perfect for testing out boards the problem I have is this I don't have any chip RAM I have a bunch of RAM of which I don't know what they even are this is the recap board with a rando sim in hit it VGA signal perfect we have no um, floppy no hard drive 
so it may take a little bit if it works. I will let each one sit for 30 seconds. Alright, I have a border. I have a clear border here. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. See the outline here? There's a black spot and then you have the gray. Who knows? I don't know if this is going to work. Alright, so I put the T-Rex in and I put my IDE card in so I can see something activity wise. And I see nothing. Alright, Kevin 3 Amiga ran. This don't work either. I am batting a thousand. Hey, welcome back. Carpet sturdy apparently upstairs again. Just want to let you know, Mona 3 is back. I took apart a big pen. Got the spring all nice and strong. She could suck the chrome off the trailer hitch. Ah. <laughs> so I'm working on the Black Beast again. It's uh, Sunday afternoon at 3.18 p.m. I just finished doing some gal replacements on these four bottom girls and I wanted something to test it on. I figured you know what I haven't worked on this busted ass machine in a long time. Let's see how it's doing. I wanted to pull the ROM sockets out and I figured it's a good test for Mona. It's a slow simple thing and I just so far so good. She's coming out clean. Board has zero zero Z Z Z what a, how you say that uh, zero battery damage and you know 891 is clean. You know, 177, 175, 176, blah, 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 or 975, 976. Great. No problems. Nothing's wrong with it. Visually. But there's something wrong somewhere because I'm not getting a CPU signal or ROM lines and it's hard to trace these things when a CPU is in it because it covers up the daggone ROMs. So I'm going to try and use the 3630. It's really narrow. Jump right to internal. And go from there. And my carpet's really dirty. So I'll check back in a bit. 3.33 p.m. Mona's still vacuuming. Sockets are out. I got a little bit of weird damage here and here. Looks like a touch of something. I don't know if you can see this. Sorry about the noise upstairs. There's like a dot and a dot. Maybe I fixed it before. Fiberglass bend it and forgot. 3.43. Vacuum's still going. I put in two SIL turn pin ROM sockets during that time. You know, like I saw her fast. It's just like... Man. So there we go. Cleaned on the bottom. Wet. I'm going to let it dry. Hi, we're back on Mr. Jack's 4000. It has been a long time since I've worked on this board. Last I checked off, I couldn't get nothing. We were getting this. I hook up the GBS 8200 to the Dell, just in case it's getting a weird screen mood. And we're getting the same thing we did before. It's like it, it, like it, bleh. It's like it wants to work, but it doesn't. So. We're going to look into the GAL codes. GAL codes, what is this madness you speak of? Well, there's about six or seven chips that make this thing be able to boot. And it has specialized code in these little chips with the white stickers all over your board for different sections. IDEs back here behind the 3640. I'm going to turn this off and I'll show you. This chip here, U213 is the miscellaneous chip ram gal so if you're having some weird chip ram crap this chip right here is u212 this is the raz cas row address select column address select control mofo u701 is called arbiter i guess he's arbitration breaks up fights right north of the super buster is U714. That's for Zorro. If you're having some Zorro issues and the 704s and they're not doing their mojo, that is the code for these guys. Next in the lineup are the two IDE controllers. They're on the other side of the board. That's U901 and 902. That's uh, IDE code and IDE state. Now, does that mean everything on this mofo is bad? No. But, I'm going to do the chip ram one because these puppies, it's acting the same way as 1200s do without their thing. And the excellent place that I get these from, AmigaWiki.org, has all the codes. U9 code was the one I did for the 1200. 
U212 Raz Kaz and U213 miscellaneous chip ram. These two guys right here are going to be replacing, which means what? Hot air time. We're going to tape the area off and we're going to hot air this bad boy like there's no tomorrow. We're going to socket everything. All right, give yourself a tile and tuck on your tape here. Tape her over so you get a little bit of, you know, you can hide that. You don't want to go in there full blast and separate the board. One's off. Two's off. These are hot. So keep that in mind when you pick them up and burn your fingers. Let this cool down and we'll have to get the uh, solder off and put new solder on. Tin the tips up so when I put the sockets down I can just touch them and glue them in. This is a TL8662 Plus, and normally you have a 27C400 EEPROM adapter, but in my case, I have the uh, PLCC to DIP20 adapter. Make sure you're all the way north, and we're going to insert said small chip into, oh my god, into this reader, like so. Little tiny chip in there, XG Pro programming software. We are going to do... 213, so I need to take 213 here and unpack it. So I'm going to say load A4000 master codes, whoops, Cal codes 213, JED file. Oh no, verify error because we have a fuse gone. Well, let's see if I can reprogram that chip with the correct thing. There we go, programming it. Programming stopped because we have a fuse problem. Shit. Programming error. Well, let's see if I can read the chip. All right, we're gonna try reading the chip. Reading the chip has something on it, but I don't know what it is. Wow, let's see if I can erase it. Erase, erase. Erase succeeded. I right, should I program in these bits? Oh, I gotta load the file again. Load the file and program it. This is the original chip now. Erase is fine, but it has a fuse program error. Fuse bit 64 has a different calculation. How do we fix that problem, Chris? We're going to remove this chip out of this dude by pulling the power out of it. Pulling this chip out. Beep. We're gonna grab a replacement chip. Ooh. Give it the old Nintendo. Okay, we're gonna read this chip. Alright, that's better. See how it's all ones? Okay, now let's load this code for the third time. And you can see how it's separated by ones and zeros on the left. We're gonna hit program and program. Programming fuse bits. Let's see if we get past this part. Verified security timer zero milliseconds and we're good. All right, verify completed. We're good. Okay, so we have a freshly programmed chip. Now I have to put it in a socket and put it back on the board. But I'm not done. I got to do the same thing for U213. This is the other one. Three nine one four seven eight zero one on mine. Three nine one four seven eight zero one. Perfect. Change this to the twenty two V ten. Perfect. We're going to read this code. Or, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to load the JED. 212. Okay. Now I'm going to hit verify. That chip is good. Verify successful. That can go right back in. Nothing wrong with it. It perfectly matched. The other one, DOA. I'm going to take both of those. I'm going to peel the sticker off of this and put it on the replacement uh, chip. Two hours later. Here is our D uh, hot aired gals and cleaned gals. You'll see a little bit on that one, but it doesn't really matter. When you're, when you're wicking or taking your braid off, don't go prying on these because epoxied little wafers connected to a line, you'll see a dot or a line go in that direction so you're not going against the grain, should I say. 
you'll know it when you see it. A couple minutes later, some drops of flux spilled everywhere, and a pretty decent soldering job for a blind guy, and there's your new socket. It's a little bit out of focus because my camera's ass, and we're good. So, now i got to kind of do my best to get the flux out of there. So now you can get a better see of what I did and before I drop this. There you go. She's wet. That's how we like her. Uh, we'll let this dry. There we go. Two sockets. I'm not Picasso, but it's in there. Gander at my 3D print that I've been having such a time on. Eight hours remaining. Let me show you what it is real quick. There you go. It is a spool for printing. Uh, printing. Yeah, it's a spool for holding your solder. It will go up like this. It's pretty intense. And I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. This is the second time I'm printing it. I had a nozzle clog and some cheap filament from Micro Center. This is what that thing is going to look like when I finally get it printed. Thingiverse, it's just, I got to explain a little while. Chips are dry, chips are in their sockets. Let me clean up for a second and then we'll fire up. Nope, same thing. But that doesn't mean we're dead in the water, okay? We had an empty gal. We had one of these bad boys that was wasted. I don't know why it was wasted. 714 Zorro, so I doubt it. It's got to be 701 Arbor. 212 is Razcaz. That checked out. 701 Arbiter or 902 I State. Mm -hmm. Nope, ain't I State because that's IDE State. Two twelve, two thirteen is what I did. Yeah, all right. So two twelve, two thirteen. I did Miss Ranch, Chip Ram, Raz, Kez. So I probably need to do Arbiter, which is seven oh one, which is the next booger, right north of the clock chip. Ah, at least it's a twenty two V sixteen. It's nice and tiny. I got hot air this SOB off. I'm tired. It's 8.30. I'll try to get this one done. Hold on. I'm just going to zap to it being done. Well, that one was good too. I just took it out, stuck it in the adapter, verified it against the original code, and it was. The only one that wasn't was 213. Now i got to socket the other one because I already socketed the other one. So I'm going to put another socket in U701, and I'll just flip back when it's done. Oh, okay, that's done. Energize. Nothing! We get the same crappy code, no diagram code. Not my night. We are stuck in low. But I got those three gal chips done, and that's the ones I wanted to get done. I am not worried about U714 Zorro because I don't even have a board in there. Don't give two shits. The IDEs, I doubt it. CIAs, who knows at this point. So I have check clock pins and all that good stuff and that's really fun when you're upside down on an accelerator board like this. You know, because you can't get to, you, you, you gotta, this side. So, that's where I'm at. We got new crystals, I remember putting those in. They're socketed, new caps, ROM speed, three replacement, well, one replacement gal, two verified program gals. And not a nothing on cereal. And that's that for tonight. It is. Funny, you bastard.